Are you planning to watch the total solar eclipse coming on April 8th, 2024? I'll be watching, and I suspect you will too. And we won't be alone. People will come to Indiana from around the world to watch this unique celestial show. So what is it about a total solar eclipse that draws so many people to see it? To find out, I asked an expert. I'm Dana Thompson, the planetarium director here at Ball State University's Charles W. Brown Planetarium. Muncie, Indiana is in the path of totality for the total solar eclipse happening on Monday, April 8th, 2024. And this hasn't happened for Muncie in over 1,000 years. The last time a total solar eclipse has come to our area was in 957 CE. Wow. So over 1,000 years ago, right? So it's really special that it's happening in our lifetime. And it won't happen again nearby anyway for another 40 or so years. Um, I think the next one is in 2099, and that one hits Fort Wayne. Solar eclipses aren't necessarily rare. They happen every six months or so during eclipse seasons. What is rare is when they happen in your area. So on average, you have to wait 375 years for a total solar eclipse to come to you. Um, but there's also partial solar eclipses and what are called annular solar eclipses. Um, different types of eclipses where you can't necessarily look at the sun without any safety eye protection, like a total solar eclipse. So, the eclipse we will experience in 2024 really is special. As a science teacher, it presents a unique opportunity to share with our students a once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon. I don't want to miss this. I've been fortunate to teach during a partial solar eclipse and an annular eclipse, but this will likely be my one and only chance to see a total solar eclipse. Dana told me a little bit more about that event. When you're in the path of totality, you can actually see the outer atmosphere of the sun when the moon is completely blocking uh, the bright disk of the sun. So when that happens, you can actually take off your safety eyeglasses and see this magnificent outer atmosphere of the sun uh, without any optical uh, aid, without eye protection, and uh, it just shows in a way that you cannot capture with a camera. So safety is high priority with viewing any solar eclipse. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you're protecting your eyes, uh, but then even more than that, your skin and other things a part of your body, um, just making sure that when you're out in the elements, you're protecting yourself. Um, so sunscreen, of course, but then also protecting your eyes from viewing the sun directly, which is why we have uh, solar viewing devices that are approved and they do have ISO certification um, that comes along with them. Ours are ISO certified and you wanna make sure you're getting them from a reputable uh, vendor. Now that we know what we're looking for, let's talk about how you might be able to view the eclipse safely. As educators, our job is to help students and the rest of the community understand the eclipse and that includes safe ways to view an eclipse. Fortunately, on October 14th, 2023, we had a chance to practice. We were in the path of a partial solar eclipse in October this year, um, and we were able to see if the weather kind of cooperated and the clouds were not in the way, a partial uh, obstruction of the sun by the moon uh, during that event with the proper eye protection or the proper viewing device, like a pinhole projection system. As it turned out, the weather did not cooperate that day. Most of Indiana was covered by clouds. In the day of the partial solar eclipse on October 14 this year, mm -hmm. we hosted this huge community block party where we really celebrated astronomy, but then also different types of um, subjects like uh, nature, the arts. We had creative writing students do a poetry exercise here. So we have to guess and figure out what they do during the eclipse. Believe it or not, crickets will actually sing the entire length of the eclipse like it's nighttime, and then they will stop singing when it ends and go back to resting until the sun actually does set. 
Um, and then we did activities, hands-on activities um, around eclipses leading up to the event. So people understood them a little bit more. They were able to use our solar telescope to view the sun and just learn how to safely view the sun. We also were handing out a lot of our eclipse classes ahead of time too, just to teach people that they can safely view the sun any day of the year when it's not overcast. You can also create your own what are called pinhole projection devices and project images of the sun. Um, you can create them relatively easily with just a piece of cardboard and a small uh, like a, a device to puncture that cardboard. Just put a little hole in it basically and uh, let the sunlight fall through the hole and onto another paper and it displays an image of the sun actually. So like, so basically, the the Department of Physics and Astronomy also set up rooms to view live streams of the annular eclipse from locations around the country. So I think they're going to use from uh, the couple of things that are live streaming. Like one is NASA, of course. Okay. Um, um, which I think there's like from Albuquerque. Okay. Um, um, so um, and then uh, there's. Then there's other, another NASA is also using like one from like Texas as well. And the planetarium continues their public education campaign as we approach the date of the eclipse. We're showing our eclipse program um, almost every single month of the year um, leading up to the April event because we want to make sure that it is front and center, that people are still having a chance to learn about it, especially people who maybe are a little late to the party and still trying to get the information last minute. If people want to come to our planetarium here in Muncie, Indiana, uh, it's first come, first serve, free of charge. Anyone who wants to come can. Uh, and uh, we typically have programs Friday and Saturdays. Fridays at 6.30, Saturdays at 3.30, 5 and 6 30. We cover lots of different shows. Um, we have lots of different show options, but we uh, do have our eclipse program. When the total eclipse happens on April 8th, there will be places all across the state where the public will be welcome to join scientists, educators, and naturalists who can help them view the eclipse safely. Ball State will not have an organized event, but the public is welcome to come to campus to view the eclipse at the university. Uh, we have a lot of spaces on campus that can be utilized. We have the new Brown Amphitheater, a lot of green spaces. Uh, so if the weather cooperates, we really hope to be able to use those spaces as viewing areas and uh, really make it an, an experience for our college students and then maybe their friends and family members as well. So there are many ways to view an eclipse without needing expensive equipment. Based on that, would you say it's safe for kids to take part in viewing the total eclipse? Yeah, kids and kids at heart can view the eclipse safely. They just have to be smart about it. There you have it. We hope you have a better idea of what you can expect on April 8th and that you have some ideas about helping others view the eclipse safely. The educational value of this is enormous and it's a great phenomenon to kick off future science lessons. With a little bit of practice, kids of all ages can enjoy the special event coming in April of 2024. You can also contact a planetarium, science museum, nature center, state park, or university near you to find out what kind of viewing events they will be hosting. Let's all get ready for the big show.